Imagine the darkest stretch of space you can picture. Quiet, empty, indifferent. And then, as if the night itself takes a breath, a vast red bloom ignites out of nowhere. Telescopes whip around, feeds go live, screens fill with a ghostly crimson cloud that seems to breathe and pulse. At its heart, something small and stubborn glows, like a coal that refuses to die. The label is dry and technical. 3i-Atlas. The feeling in every control room is anything but. People speak in whispers, pointing at a halo that looks more like a wound than a comet. The question lands with the weight of a stone dropping in still water. What is 3i-Atlas, really? We think we know how comets behave. They have a rhythm. A frozen body drifts inward, sunlight warms its skin, ices turns straight into gas, and a soft round coma blossoms around the nucleus. Then, as the gas escapes, it sweeps just away, and a tail stretches out like a banner. One tail curves and shines, pushed by sunlight, the other glows straight and blue, shared by the solar wind. It's a reliable dance. You don't have to be a scientist to recognize the steps. It's so familiar that we can spot a comet silhouette from a single glance. But 3i-Atlas greets the rules with a blank stare and walks the other way. There is a coma, yes. But it is the wrong color and the wrong kind of quiet. Instead of the soft whites and pale blues we expect, the image looks drenched in deep red, the kind that makes you instantly read danger into the scene. The glow is broad, stretched across a distance so large you could line up worlds in it. And yet, for all that size, the center is shy, the nucleus hard to resolve, as if the object is hiding inside its own breath. Spectrograph do their work, splitting the light, and the result is a twist you feel in your gut. The gas is dominated by carbon dioxide. Not the usual water vapor we prepare for. Not a complicated soup with a little of everything. A flood of CO2 pouring into the vacuum like an open valve on an invisible tank. If that much gas is escaping, simple logic tells you what should come next. A tail so bright you could trace it with your finger across the sky. Comets are not optional. In the comet playbook, they are the payoff. But this object refuses the flourish. The gas appears and lingers and stains the dark, and the classic tail never quite arrives. It's like watching a bonfire that somehow gives off no smoke. It makes you sit up straighter, lean closer. Something is off. Not just in one way, but in a stack of ways that don't belong together. For days, even weeks, its faintness tricks people into calling it small. Then, the numbers begin to shift, the way they do when better data lands on the table. Calibrations tighten, models get updated, and the nucleus stops being tiny and starts being significant. Tens of kilometers across, some estimates say. Large enough to count as a landscape. A body that big should be loud in sunlight, billowing dust, blazing with the ordinary drama of ice meeting heat. Instead, 3i-Atlas keeps everything on low volume, contained to hide inside its own red fog and issue riddles. It's too big to be this bashful. It's too active to be this quiet. It's too red to be called normal. Every sentence ends in a question mark. The story of its arrival had all the ingredients of a blockbuster. It showed up far from home, beyond the steady road of the inner planets, and even there it began to brighten early like a singer clearing their throat before stepping on stage. Trajectory plots placed its path comfortably inside the orbit of Mars a close shave with the sun, and then a wide, safe drift past Earth a little later. People started to say big things out loud. Naked eye bright, maybe. A show worth losing sleep over. Cameras were packed, viewing guides drafted. That's when the object started writing its own script. The light curve hiccuped. Flares came and went without warning. The glow shifted like mood lighting. And then, mid-performance, it fractured. A breakup isn't rare for comets. Heat builds, pressure rises, seams fail. What made this breakup wrong was everything that followed. Instead of scattering into chaos, the fragments kept company. They slid through space together like a haunted procession, each one wrapped in its own scaled-down red cloud as if the original had cloned itself in miniature. The pale still refused to play along. 
the brightness hung in an uneasy balance. Images trickled out, results were checked and rechecked, and the long silence between first whisper and official word turned into part of the mystery. Was the data just too strange to trust? Were the instruments to blame? Or was the object itself so far from our expectations that the only responsible choice was to measure it again and again until doubt finally gave up? There is one trick of light that refuses to be quiet here. If the dust is extremely fine, smaller than what you'd call powdery, and the viewing angle lines up, forward scattering can make the area in front of the object look unnaturally bright. It's a magician's flourish built into physics. Light glancing along the edge of particles and amplifying the glow towards the sunside. It's odd, but it is real. Add in the way cameras pick and choose wavelengths through filters and you can paint a scene that seems more crimson than it would to the naked eye, highlighting the narrow lines where specific molecules shout the loudest. Red here isn't paint. It's a story about chemistry told in a dialect we don't listen to very often. The chemistry matters. CO2 isn't rare in comets but it usually plays second chair to water when sunlight wakes them up. The idea that CO2 would dominate, loud and relentless, suggests an origin colder than the places our comets learn to be comets. Cold enough that CO2 wasn't a garnish. Cold enough that it was the main dish. Mix in dark carbon-rich dust and trace vapors like sodium and you can swing the color toward blood red, especially if your instruments are tuned to the exact notes where those elements sing. All of this builds a path to what we are seeing without accusing the universe of breaking its own rules. But the way the pieces arrange themselves still feels like a ghost putting on a lab coat. The part that makes people sit back and rub their eyes is not just the colour or the missing tail or the breakup parade. It's the origin. The orbit is hyperbolic. That word carries a very simple truth. This thing is not ours. It didn't form in a backyard and it will not stay for coffee. It swung in from the dark, the in-between of stars, caught one hard look at our sun and is already on its way out. We've only had two messengers like this before. The first was Oumuamua, a shard or a shard-like ghost that slid through in 2017, weirdly accelerating as if sunlight could push it harder than it should. The second was Borisov, which felt familiar enough to calm people down. 3i-Atlas does not sniff at either path, it chooses a third way. Imagine the age stamped into its skin. Millions of years, maybe more. Exiled from home, cast into the space between homes, where starlight lives mostly as rumour and cold is not a season but a fact. In that long drift, the lightest, most flighty ices should slowly evaporate even in the faintest radiation. A crust should thicken over time, like a scar that keeps getting touched. When sunlight finally returns in force, water usually speaks first. With 3 i atlas CO2 seemed to have the microphone from the moment the house lights came up. That flip makes you think about where it was born, how it was made, and what it has been through during a silence longer than we have words for. Maybe the answer is violent and simple. Somewhere far from here, around another star, a word like Pluto took a hit it couldn't shrug off. Its layers shattered, rock and ice and exotic frost tumbled outward, and a few of those pieces earned a passport to interstellar space. If one of them was rich in CO2 and strong enough to hold itself together for a marathon, then what we are seeing fits snugly. A shard of a cold mantle still holding the memory of a world's surface chemistry. A broken piece that never got the memo to behave like a comet from our neighbourhood. Or maybe the answer is quiet and strange. The nucleus could be a loose congregation of rubble. More empty space than solid so porous that gas has to wander through a maze before it escapes. Picture a giant cosmic sponge. Gas would seep, not jet. Dust would lag, trapped by the labyrinth. The result would be a coma that gets big and red without ever giving us the crisp, dramatic tail we keep trying to find. If that sponge fractured, you wouldn't get an explosion. You'd get a procession of smaller sponges, each exhaling like the original, each wearing the same wrong colour like a uniform. There's an everyday explanation too, as unglamorous as a valve with a slow leak. Over the ages, the object might have grown a tight, sun-baked crust. Not a smooth shell, more like a cracked glaze. When the sun finally warmed it, only a few vents opened at first and those vents happened to tap CO2-rich pockets. The gas leaked along paths of least resistance in directions that changed as the object spun, smearing the coma and confusing the view. Dust, trapped under crust, came late. 
that would keep everything faint, sideways, and stubbornly untail like for longer than anyone expected. It fits the hiccups in brightness. It fits the red. It even fits the fragments staying closed as if the family is glued together by slow physics rather than drama. If you lean too hard on any one explanation, though the puzzle pushes back. The chemistry covers some of the weirdness but not all of it. The geometry explains some images and refuses others. The sponge idea is graceful until you ask it to account for every flicker in the light curve. That's what makes 3i by ATLS feel like a living riddle rather than a list of facts. Each answer is a door that opens into a hallway with more doors. Each hallway leads you back to the same sentence on the whiteboard. What is 3i by ATLS? Really? The numbers that matter for your nerves are simple. It's passing inside the orbit of Mars. It will curl around the Sun and then drift out past Earth at a distance that's cozy for telescopes and boring for doomsday headlines. It is not a threat. There is no hidden twist where a fragment suddenly learns to cross our path. The laws of motion are not shy about their limits. If 3i by ATLS threatens anything, it's the comfort we take in thinking the universe is tidy. It reminds us that the sky hosts more than one kind of story. What happens next is a dance between time and attention. As the object turns and tumbles, the coma will change. It will grow or fade, sharpen or smudge, repeat patterns or refuse them. Infrared instruments will listen for warmth where our eyes can't see. Ultraviolet detectors will catch tales the visible world ignores. Radio telescopes will weigh the outgassing we can only guess at in normal light. Polarimetry, yes, that mouthful, will tell us how the dust scatters light, which is a roundabout way of learning what it's made of and how big the grains are. If we get spectra from the fragments and they match, we're looking at one story told in pieces. If they don't, we might be reading layers from a shattered book. Surface chemistry, then just under, then deeper still. The breakup itself deserves more than a passing glance. When comets come apart under stress, the pieces often kick away with speed, pushed by jets and tumbling like badly thrown stones. What we saw here was restraint. The convoy kept formation. That suggests that the forces at play were small. The separation's gentle. It suggests a body that was internally weak but mutually loyal. Rubble held together by gravity's whisper and frozen bridges. Gas jets may be doing the choreography, nudging fragments apart and then letting them drift in the same lane. There's something elegant in that, a kind of physics ballet in an empty theatre. There are, of course, the people behind the images. They sit in rooms with the lights kept low, checking calibration files and comparing yesterday's cuts to today's cuts. They speak in numbers, and then when they're tired, in metaphors. The group chat buzzes at odd hours. Someone posts a spectrum with a line drawn in red. Someone else says seeing this and a third person answers with a timestamp and a shrug emoji because even experts live in the same world of tired humour as the rest of us. It's not that science is romantic. It's that curiosity is stubborn. It keeps people awake longer than they plan to be. You don't have to be in those rooms to feel the pull. There's a reason we walk outside on cold nights and glance up even when we know nothing visible is happening. There's a reason this red ghost caught the internet's imagination even among people who couldn't tell a dust tale from a sodium flare. It's because a good mystery makes all of us the same kind of creature for a moment. Interested, humble, unsure. We get to say, I don't know, without shame, and follow it with, let's find out without permission. If the coming days bring a stronger water signal, then one of the simplest stories will win. The crust held, the CO2 escaped first, the dust was late, to the party. If the images finally resolve a tale in wavelengths we weren't watching, then we'll chalk the worst of our confusion up to perspective. If the polarimetry whispers, carbon-rich, ultra-fine dust, then we'll accept that the tale was there all along, hidden by its own stealth. And if the fragments each sing a slightly different chemical song, the exoplanet shard theory will trade its what-if for a maybe-so. This is how uncertainty narrows, not with fireworks, but with the quiet accumulation of clues. What won't change is the value of what we've already learnt. Interstellar visitors don't just entertain us, they carry recipes written in the handwriting of other suns. If we want to understand how common life-suitable worlds might be, what atmospheres are made of, how ices pack themselves into rocks, and how heat rewrites chemistry, we need samples from beyond our local neighbourhood. We can't go there yet. So, on rare lucky days, there comes here. It's not polite, it doesn't wait, it doesn't explain itself. It simply passes through and lets us decide how much of the lesson we are willing to catch. The ending we get is quiet. The object will crest in brightness, the way a wave folds at the beach, and then it will thin into ordinary darkness. Weekly updates will become monthly. The world will move on to other headlines. But if you paid attention, you'll be left with a kind of afterimage. 
a red cloud that changed your sense of what a comet is allowed to be. You'll be left with a better question than the one you started with. Not just what is 3i by ATLS, but what else out there is this strange and how will we notice it next time? Because there will be a next time, a fourth visitor, a fifth, each with its own accent, its own habits, its own refusal to fit inside our notes. That's not a failure of the model. That's the point of having a model at all, to test it against the real world and then fix it when the world refuses to fit. 3i by ATLS didn't just break the rules, it taught us where the rules were too narrow. So we circle back to the sentence that started this, the one that belongs on a sticky note on every monitor watching this guy. What is 3i by ATLS? Really? Maybe it's a comet that grew up somewhere colder than our maps know how to draw. Maybe it's the shard of an alien world, still wrapped in the chemistry of a surface we will never walk. Maybe it's a sponge made of space gravel, teaching us what porosity can do to light and gas. Maybe it's all of those at once, a messy combination that only looks simple from far away. If you step outside tonight and find the sky clear, try this. Don't look for the red cloud. You won't see it without help. Just stand still for a minute and think about the emptiness above you. Somewhere in it, a stranger came, paused and left a puzzle where you could reach it. Somewhere another stranger is already on the way, indifferent to your schedule and immune to your expectations. The universe is not trying to surprise you. It just does because it is made of things that don't care what you are ready for. This is the part where someone usually offers closure. There isn't any yet and that's okay. We can live without the answer for a little while because we've been given something else in its place. A better mystery, a sharper curiosity, a reason to point our instruments and our attention back at a sky that keeps getting weirder the closer we look. The human mind was made for puzzles like this. It's why we learn to write numbers down and we still tell stories when numbers aren't enough. So no, 3i by ATLS isn't a comet the way your childhood poster taught you to recognize one. It's not a threat and it's not a neat headline. It's something harder and better. It's evidence that the universe is still large enough to make us honest, still strange enough to make us humble and still generous enough to bring its secrets within range of our most patient questions. And it's already slipping away. Crimson fading to grey, grey dissolving into a darkness it knows far better than we do. If you listen closely, you can almost hear it telling us the only sentence it told us. Pay attention, I was here.